this is one of the this is one of the favorite poems of uh, American lore, and uh, this one takes a few minutes, so sit back, relax, get comfortable. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly, I remember. It was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain, Rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now to still the beating of my heart I stood repeating, tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer, Sir, said I, oh, madam, truly, your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came tapping, so faintly you came rapping, rapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, Doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence gave no token, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the name Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back within the chamber, turning all my soul within me, burning. Soon again I heard a tapping, something louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what there at is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open then I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not an instant stopped or stayed he, but with mane of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat and nothing more. And this ebony bird beguiling I said, fancy in the smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance at war. Oh, thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bud above his chamber door. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bust spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me as my hopes has flown before. Then the bird said, never more. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, 
Doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his song one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of nevermore, nevermore. But the raven still beguiling, all oh, my sad so wind is smiling, Straight I wheel the cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy under fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This I sat engaged, divining with my head at ease, reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then, methought, the air grew denser, perfing from some unseen censer swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, my God hath lent thee. By these angels he has sent thee respite, respite, and a penthe from the memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind of penthe, and forget the lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest sent thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly I adore. Is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above it, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore! Be that word a sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked up starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonium shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul has spoken. Leave thy loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off the door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming, throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. Edgar Allan Poe, of course, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.